Who are you gonna call? Not me, I'm telling you. Do you believe in ghosts? I don't know if I do, but I certainly like the idea of there being a whole world invisible to us mere mortals. The mystery of it gives me chills. Probably because I'm scared. I'm scared of everyone and everything. So it makes sense for me to watch true crime in the middle of the night and to get interested in a book called Anna Dressed in Blood. Anna Dressed in Blood is the first book of the Anna duology. I found this book thanks to a comment for another book on Goodreads, recommending it for some good YA horror chills. The title sounded very interesting, so I checked it out, and the pretty cover convinced me. Yes, I know, don't judge a book by its cover, but... Come on, we all do it. And in this case, I was right. It was a good book. And since it's about ghosts, I thought it would be the perfect chance for me to make Ghostbusters jokes. But they do it plenty of times in the book already. And here I thought I was original and funny. Ugh, you know what? F I'm still doing it. <laughs> the story follows teenage boy Theseus Cassio. <laughs> Wait, seriously? That's your name, buddy? I am so sorry. See, Cass is not like other boys. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. I'm kidding, just wanted to make you cringe a little. He is special though, because he's a ghost bust hunter. He's a ghost hunter. So young, and he already works to track and capture evil spirits seeking revenge and murder from beyond the grave. For that, he travels across the country with his family. And what a strange family. The mom is a kitchen witch. Hey! And the dad is a ghost hunter as well, except he's dead, because a super evil ghost got him a few years ago and bit large pieces of meat from his body. Gruesome! So Cass is doing the job now and him and his mom go after Anna, also known as Anna Dressed in Blood, the curse left by a girl who has been murdered decades ago, an urban legend among the townspeople who's said to kill anybody that gets close to her old house. How much are we betting that a group of stupid teenagers are going to that specific house? Damn. Cass and his mom settle in this new town and they're like, act natural. So now Cass has to go to school. An even bigger nightmare than the murderer's souls if you ask me. But Cass is doing fine. First day, pretty girl Carmel sees him and approaches him. Is that a thing? Do people really talk to you when you're new? Cause from my experience, it's a thing that only happens in fiction. Cass goes to a party with a bunch of high schoolers to get information on Anna. He manages to get Carmel and three other dudes to take him to Anna's house house. Stupid! We're in the company of Mike, your typical jerky jock, and his two minions. I forgot their names. They start fooling around, of course, in this very obviously haunted house. Stupid! Mike also thinks it's a good idea to violently hit Cass in the head with a floorboard. What's wrong with him? Anna comes out because you can't just enter people's house like that. That's rude! In this moment, I know it's gonna go badly for Mike. And sure enough, Anna, terrifying in her bloody dress, grabs him and starts throwing <gasps> him around. Oh my god, it's a poltergeist. I didn't expect Mike to die so soon, but Anna's cool, so she just slices him in two. We love queens who do this. Mike freaks out as he's being torn apart and he yells, it's just a prank, bro, before dying. It was just a prank, Han. <laughs> Good riddance. Dude, I almost forgot to introduce the best friend. I liked Thomas at first. He seemed to be that one eccentric character I usually appreciate. Plus, he annoyed our MC so fast I thought it was funny. And he's a psychic. I love psychics. But then I discovered this guy can't keep his mouth shut. Seriously, don't trust him with any of your secrets. This dude won't ever shut up. He was so quick to tell Carmel that Cass was a ghostbuster. All because she's pretty? Pathetic. At this point, Cass wants to save Anna because he believes that she's not as bad as she seems. That the thing that's making her so scary is a whole different entity. So he conspires with his mom and Thomas's weird grandpa to find a solution. They prepare a binding spell with rocks and chicken feet, stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not that kind of witch. I'm the real deal. Anyway, they perform the spell, put Anna inside the protective circle, and we get to see her past. This is about to get messed up. Anna wears a pretty white dress to go to her school dance. Pretty normal 
animals so far. But here comes the stepfather, who's of course a major creep. He forbids Anna to go to her dance because she looks like, and I quote, a whore. The mom is around. You'd think she'd come and defend her daughter? And I hoped. Oh, I hoped. It was in vain, because really, both parents deserve to burn in hell. Turns out the mother is a witch, a disgrace to our name. And she uses her powers to curse Anna, who she casually watched die, by summoning a demon to keep her trapped inside the house forever. All because she didn't want her daughter to go to that dance. Thanks, mom. Imagine dying and escaping being grounded, but then your witch mom still grounds you in death. And she calls herself a witch? Us witches don't claim her, that's for sure. As if that wasn't enough, she asks the perv of a stepdad to take off Anna's dress. Oh my god. The bloodied white dress is used as a seal to trap Anna, and it's only when Cass and his squad uncover it that they manage to get rid of the demon that made Anna's ghost half evil. Now, I wonder if I should mention the romance? Because somehow... Cass kisses Anna? And now they're in love? How? Never mind, it's whatever, it was just so weird. <laughs> the spell is successful, the demon is gone, Anna is free, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> kidding. Minion number one runs away with Cass's knife. And even more concerning, brutal killings started happening in town. Stolen knife? Killings? This doesn't sound good. There was some back and forth about whether Anna was involved, but no. The victims had entire chunks of meat missing from their bodies. Sounds familiar? Yep. A ghost from the past is back. And okay, this is actually pretty funny. I didn't mention it earlier, but Cass and his mom had some rat problem in the attic. Rats. Rats? Really? You hear weird noises in the attic and you, a witch and a ghost hunter, just assume it's a bunch of rats and none of you actually goes to check. That's a fucking demon in the attic, you idiots! I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed and even I knew that much. It's only when the evil thing decided to get out that Cass was like, oh sh mom, let's get out of here. Wow. Good job. Even the cat trying to warn you. I think the cat is dead too. Shame on you. Our entire squad is gathered in Anna's house and that's where the final battle takes place. Anna and... Ugh, that ghost has a name but all I can remember is that I couldn't pronounce it. Let's call him Frederick Charles Levensworth Samuel Boo III. Anna and Frederick Charles Levensworth Samuel Boo III fight. To the death. To to the double death. And listen, I have no idea what happened here, but Anna goes berserk and suddenly there's a massive hole in the ground where she and Frederick Charles Levensworth Samuel Boo III fall. Everybody else runs away. The house collapses and that's it. This is not a joke. That's pretty much it. I liked Anna dressed in blood more than I thought I would. I did roll my eyes a couple times at some of the typical YA tropes. I guess I'm too old for that. But it is YA after all. I can't be mad. The horror aspect is pretty good, although I think we could have done a bit better with the dark atmosphere. I also don't understand the need for a sequel. Honestly, if I didn't know there was a sequel, I would have been mad seeing how book one ends. But I think the story could have been wrapped up in one book, so I'm worried it was stretched out needlessly. I am reading book two still. It's called Girl of Nightmares. I hope it lives up to that name. Alright, witches, it's time to part ways for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I won't make any more Ghostbuster references, I promise. I'm just going to end this video with my favorite quote of the book. God, living people are irritating.